Every day, thousands of people head out onto the water looking forward to a good day of fishing. But our marine resources are not what they used to be. Habitat loss, overfishing, and pollution have taken their toll, and today's anglers are confronted with more and more restrictions. Size limits have become a very important tool in fisheries management in the last decade or so, and it's also become quite controversial. As we increase the size limits in the regulatory area, the fishermen are allowed to catch fewer and fewer fish and keep them. Consequently, there's a lot of frustration in the recreational community about the impact of size limits on their ability to, to catch and keep fish. For example, over the last 10 years, size limits on grouper in the Gulf of Mexico have increased from 12 to 24 inches. But as fishermen try to comply with these regulations, one problem keeps coming to the surface. Our customers were getting really upset because we were throwing undersized fish back over the side. And to see them floating off, you know, and not being able to, you know, go ahead and string, string in their fish, and it seemed like a big waste to them. Also, it was a big waste to us, too. A lot of fishermen seem to find it a little ridiculous that, you know, in some of the laws, being aware that the fish has to be a certain size, and they can't keep it, and they have to throw it back. And a lot of times, the fish floats away, and it dies. So University of Florida Sea Grant and Moat Marine Laboratory began studying the different methods used to help undersized fish get back down to their natural habitat. The research focused on a technique called venting. Venting was developed because a lot of people were fishing and throwing back undersized fish they were not allowed to keep by law. When these fish hit the surface of the water after being caught and released, they floated. This upset a lot of people because if they saw fish being thrown away, they, they could have kept and eaten when these fish were probably going to die anyway. So venting was developed to help these fish return to the bottom where their natural habitat is and survive longer. To understand how venting works, you need to know a little about the anatomy of a fish. There are basically two kinds of fish, those with swim bladders and those without. For example, mackerels, cobias, sharks, and rays do not have swim bladders. They have to swim all the time or they'll sink to the bottom. Fish with swim bladders can hover and stay in one place. Some examples are triggerfish and snapper. Fish have either an open or closed swim bladder, but researchers focused this study on those with closed swim bladders, like grouper and snapper, because they suffer the most from rapid decompression. Just about any fish with a um, closed swim bladder is susceptible to uh, swim bladder rupture. And uh, this is because there's less of a problem with fishes that have open swim bladders because the fish with open swim bladders can get rid of the excess gas through the mouth and through the gills. Those fish with closed swim bladders, on the other hand, have to um, rely on the capillary system in order for the gas to get out of the swim bladder. The problem occurs when a fish is hooked in deep water and reeled up quickly. A closed swim bladder does not have time to adjust to the rapid change in pressure, so it bursts, releasing all of the swim bladder gases into the body of the fish. If the fish is released in this condition, it cannot descend or right itself to swim back down to deep water. There was a big concern by many fishermen uh, who saw that the fish that they threw back actually floated out and were very subject to predation by sharks, other large predatory fish, seabirds, and also that some of them were just floating on the surface for long periods of time and they were subject to the elements, to the sun and to air, which would damage the fish as well. A good example of what happens to a swim bladder is to think of it as a balloon. Under pressure, the gases within the bladder compress and so the fish is able to descend and is also able to stay on the bottom. But when the fish starts to ascend or is brought to the surface in the case of being caught by a fisherman, the swim bladder gases begin to expand and they start to get larger and larger so that the swim bladder in the fish that might be coming up will start to expand with the gases and get larger and larger until finally the swim bladder, just like this balloon, gets to the maximum capacity that it can hold for the swim bladder gases and then what happens is that the swim bladder ruptures. And so there's no way that you can deflate this anymore and this is pretty much what the swim bladder looks like after it is ruptured. This is where venting comes in. 
To properly vent a fish, first you need the right tool. Anything can be used as long as it's sharp, pointed, and hollow. The reason for that is that the hollow tube will allow the gases that are trapped inside the body cavity to be released out into the environment and then out of the fish's body. And this will allow the fish to be able to uh, sink down back into depth. It's also important to vent the fish in the right place. Using the pectoral fin as a guide, insert the tool at a 45 degree angle, being careful not to go too deep into the fish's body. This way, no internal organs should be damaged. But for some fish, venting is not necessary. For fish such as red snapper, which have very small swim bladders, the amount of gas that's released into the body cavity is not substantial enough to keep the fish from being able to return to habitat depth. And so the Results basically show that venting is good for some species, basically those with large swim bladders, but venting is not a useful tool for those species that have small swim bladders. Studies conducted at Moat Marine Lab focused on red grouper and red snapper, as they live in the same habitat. But only the grouper showed a significant increase in survival after being vented and released in water shallower than 100 feet. Research is still being conducted on the effects of venting on red snapper, taken from 145 feet and deeper. Venting is not a new technique, and over the years some misconceptions have developed about it. A lot of people uh, believe that the stomach, when it pops out of the fish's mouth, is actually the fish's swim bladder. Um, what happens is that when the swim bladder ruptures, the swim bladder gases expand and they push the stomach out of the fish's mouth. So a lot of people um, have poked holes either using ice picks or diving knives in th and poked holes in the fish's stomach uh, thinking that was the swim bladder and it's actually not. The swim bladder at that point is already ruptured. The second myth is that using an ice pick or a diving knife uh, is an acceptable tool for venting a fish. Uh, this is not true. What you need is something that is hollow, uh, something that is like a stainless steel cannula, uh, the syringe, um, something that is, that is a hollow and will allow the gases to escape from the fish's body because using, by using an ice pick or by using a knife, you're basically just putting a puncture wound and the puncture wound closes so rapidly that it really doesn't allow for su a sufficient amount of the swim bladder gases to be expelled from the body cavity. <music> Myth number three would be that a lot of people believe that when they're venting the swim bladder gases from the fish's body cavity that they're actually venting the swim bladder. When the, when the gases are contained in the fish's body cavity, the, the rupture has already occurred in the swim bladder and it's similar to what would happen to a balloon that has been uh, punctured. Basically there are no more gases in the swim bladder to vent. Preliminary studies indicate venting does work for some fish. Researchers have learned that the ruptured swim bladder heals and is functional within four days. The puncture wound made by the venting tool also does not appear to harm the fish. Let's say, you know, just guesstimating, I've probably released over a thousand fish over the last year, year and a half, and at least 80 to 90 percent of them I've seen swim down. Um, very few fish stay floating, and I do personally believe it's working. Um, also a couple of times, like with red groupers and some other fish, you know, we've vented them and you'll actually catch them again. You know, a few weeks later, you'll see the little mark from where you vented them. You know, it's healed up and it looks good and the fish seems healthy. Basically, the results show that for some species such as red grouper and gag, venting can be a useful tool because in the short term, it provides a way for the fish to overcome the buoyancy of the swim bladder gases and to get back down to habitat so that they can um, avoid predators. The venting tool is easy to use and makes a valuable addition to a tackle box. While it may seem like a small thing to do, Venting is just one way fishermen can contribute to preserving our valuable marine resources for tomorrow. For more information, please contact your local county extension marine agent or the Florida Sea Grant College program at the address shown on your screen.